absolutely did not, by gangly limbs. Kotsky is absolutely sure of three things in life. Number one, he's going to be a goddamn hero. A good one. That has not changed in the past three years since he started high school. His determination has never dimmed. His fire has stayed lit. He's going to be a hero. Damn everyone else, he's going to be the best hero. Number two. The world has it out for him. Like, he has lessons to learn. Like, he needs to grow. And, yeah, he might begrudgingly admit that it might be true. UA has beaten that into him, at least. He still calls bullshit, though. Number three. He's not someone to be loved. It's not something that Kotsky tries to fight. He knows it deep down in his bones. He's not someone others can love. And sure, he knows that his parents love him, but that's love he knows can't be given. They have no choice but to love him. No. Kotsky will never have the love he sees from movies and TV shows, or the romance books he absolutely did not have. And even if he did, he absolutely did not steal them from his parents. He is loveless. Always has been, always will be. Kotsky keeps those truths deep down in his heart, walks along the earth with them etched into his brain. He knows who he is, and he has a pretty good idea of what the world is like. And he's fine with them. He absolutely is. Will you accept this card as a token of my love? The girl smirks as she says it, sure and confident, hips cocked to one side, one hand trailing through long brown hair. Kotsky stares at her and wonders when this will end. No. Her eyes flicker, but she doesn't lose her smirk. It only grows. <sighs> I didn't mean it anyway. I was just dared to ask. I really wouldn't ask you out. He knows. By the gods does he know. It starts with a mistake. He, annoyingly enough, becomes entangled in a love triangle. Not by his own violation, mind you. He's not that stupid. Some girl had just taken an infatuation with him. A second-year general class student. She had started to wait outside of class for him, at training grounds, at his freaking internship. Kotsky hated it. It was unnecessary, and she was only getting in his way. He told her so, several times, but she had cotton in her ears, apparently, and refused to listen. The dim-witted second-year loser who likes her is also apparently an idiot. He huffs and puffs after Kotsky, never truly getting too close, but always making noises nearby. Kotsky had one of those damn lessons beaten into him, that maybe he shouldn't go picking every fight that comes across him, grits his teeth and ignores it. Which only makes the guy puff up more. Kotsky truly does not give a flying fuck, but the guy does, and the girl is eating it up, sighing about a battle over true love. Kotsky has no idea how this has become his life. It's so ridiculous. Anyways, the mistake comes when the girl comes to confess her love for the third time that week. Only this time, the guy follows close behind. She hands Kotsky a letter and confesses, and then waits for Kotsky to answer. Kotsky, for his part, sighs. I don't know how many times I need to tell you this, but I don't like you. Leave me alone. And even though he says something similar to her every time she pulls this, her bottom lip starts to wobble and she stamps her feet. But I love you. Kotsky cocks an eyebrow. And? She looks like she's going to burst into tears, fake as they may be. Apparently, that is the breaking point for Loverboy. He stomps up to them, 
gets in Kotsky's face and spits. Hey, asshole, what's your problem? Kotsky squints at him, running through all the reasons why he should absolutely not punch this guy out. Number one, it would cause too many problems. Number two, he is studying he needs to do, which he can't do if he has to deal with those problems. Number three, these idiots just aren't freaking worth it. Tanaka is pouring her heart out to you, and all you can say is leave me alone? How could you so cruelly reject her? Because I don't like her, Kotsky says. He doesn't get what their fucking problem is. He thought he made this clear already. Now move. I'm hungry and you're in my way. Kotsky tries to step to the side. The guy steps in front of him. Kotsky raises an eyebrow at him. Oh, so this guy is brave now, huh? He thinks he's hot shit. Kotsky has stared down villains and not blinked. Does this idiot really think one love-struck fool scares him? Well, hotshot, what do you have to say? But I don't care. Kotsky tries to move again, and the idiot steps out in front of him. Keep calm, keep calm, keep calm. You can't miss that test tomorrow just because someone wanted to start a fight. He sighs. Look. You clearly have no brain cells, and she's a self-centered brat. You two are perfect for each other. Why don't you just grow some balls and ask her out? The girl, Tanaka apparently, makes an outraged noise and the extra sputters. What the fuck did you say? T Tanaka's the sweetest, kindest, most giving person I've ever met. Then you clearly haven't met a lot of people. Kotsky can't help snarking. Just let me fucking walk, you dumbass extra. This kid, this fucking kid, actually starts to roll up his sleeves. You think you're so badass, don't you? Think you rule this school, huh? That you can just say whatever you want and we have to take it. That would require me to actually care about you or what you think, Kotsky says. You can't believe this kid actually wants to do this. Does he even know how to throw a punch? By the fighting stance he takes, that would be a no. For fuck's sake, how did he even get into UA? Don't they require fighting courses at all for non-heroic students? I'm not gonna fight you, he says, because it would just be sad. Even that pervy little grape fuck could probably put up a better fight. Why? Too chicken? The guy sneers because he has no sense of self-preservation. Tanaka, determined to be an annoying pest throughout this entire process, stands to the side with hearts in her eyes. No, please, she says, voice so fake it hurts Kotsky's ears. She even throws a hand over her forehead, like she's about to swoon. Don't fight over my love. I couldn't handle that. This dipshit eats it up. Fear not, sweetheart. I'm here to defend your honor. This beast. He spits it like it's the first time Kartsky's ever been called that. Will not make a mockery of you. You're both making a mockery of yourselves. What the fuck are you even doing? What kind of stance is that? The boy flushes. It's a deep red. Actually, a lot redder than what Kartsky assumes is normal. He doesn't know. He absolutely does not get embarrassed. Come on! The shitty extra spits. Why won't you fight me? Kotsky sighs, staring up at the sky. His patience is nearing its end, and no matter how much he knows he shouldn't, eventually he's gonna snap. I would destroy you. The guy snorts getting into an even sloppier stance. I'm gonna beat your ass. Kotsky is ten seconds away from saying, fuck it, because even if he gets in trouble, it'll at least be over quicker than trying to talk sense into these fuckwits. And he hears his name being called. Bakubro! Hey! 
He half turns, already knowing who it is, because only one idiot calls him something stupid like bro. And yep, there's the idiot squad walking towards them. Mina and Kyoko are talking to each other, showing each other their phones. No doubt sharing memes, like the heathens that they are. Denki, the person who called out to him, waves his arms widely. Hunter shaking his head next to him. And Ejiro is there, smiling, as if happy to see Katsuki. Katsuki feels his lips twitch. And then he takes a step back, letting the wild swing at him go past his face. The boy's mouth goes, oh, like he's fucking surprised he missed. The fucking extra. Ejiro and Denki shout in surprise, drawing the other's attention. Katsuki ignores them, turning back to the extra. Red-faced, the extra throws another punch. Kotsky catches it and squeezes. Not at full strength, but enough to get the guy to cry out. You really have no fucking idea what you're doing, do you? The extra grimaces, fear finally entering that thick skull. Tanaka, on the other hand, is still as stupid as ever. Let him go, you monster! Kotsky snorts, shoving the extra backwards. Tonica catches him, staring Kotsky down. The extra shakes his hand. Hey, what's going on? Ejiro says, having finally crossed the space between them. He's panting slightly, after having run all the way over. Denki is right behind him, breathing heavier. Kotsky gives him a critical eye and makes a mental note to add stamina training to their gym hangouts. This beast hurt my dear Nakamura, Tanaka says. She's back to fate crying, holding the extra close to her chest. Extra looks as if he's never been happier. Denki frowns, raising an eyebrow at her. Um, you know he could see you, right? He threw a punch when Katsuki wasn't looking. Which is very unmanly of you, dude, Ejiro puts in. The extra looks shocked by that. Tanaka frowns. He started it, she insisted. Katsuki snorts. You were the ones that physically refused to let me leave. I didn't start shit. Tanaka doesn't even look at him, turning fully to stare at Ejiro and Denki. Out of the corner of his eyes, he sees Hanta, Mina, and Kyoka slowly approach. He really did start it, she continues, drawing Katsuki's attention back to her. Nakamura was just trying to defend me. And the extra eagerly nods. Katsuki scowls, fists clenching. That bitch. I can't believe she's trying to manipulate a squad. Ejiro gives him his usually sunny smile. He places a hand on Katsuki's shoulder, giving him a squeeze. Katsuki relaxes. Hey, no one got hurt, right? We should all leave and cool down. Maybe we can talk about it later? No one got hurt? The extra yelps. He nearly broke my wrist! Well, you did sort of throw a punch at him. Hunter speaks up raising an eyebrow at him. The extra and Tanaka go to protest when Ejidor steps in again. Look, it seems like this argument is just going in a circle. Let's all just walk away, okay? The extra and Tanaka glare at him, clearly unwilling to let this drop. Katsuki can feel his agitation rising, now that these fucks aren't just disrespecting him, but also his friends. Luckily, his friends have more patience than him. Hey, we're gonna be late for dinner, Mina pipes up, giving the two of them a wide, clearly fake smile. We should get going. Plus, we have that homework to do, Joker says. 
She gives Kotsky a look. You promised to help us. Hunter and Ejido slowly start pulling Kotsky away. He lets them. Denki steps in front of the annoying extras, working his charm on the two. Kotsky is slightly disgusted to find out it seems to be working on Tanaka. Ejido and Hunter turn him around so he's no longer facing them. Mina grabs one arm, hanging off it, uncaring that Kotsky growls at her. He can hear Denki catching up to them. Once he does, he pats Bakugo on the back. So, you want to tell me what that was about, dude? Kotsky growls. She wanted to confess her love to me. Again? Mina asks, scrunching up her nose. Yeah, again, he says. He notices that Ejido's hand tightens on his shoulder for a briefest moment. He doesn't know what it's about, and before he can ask, Kyoka jumps in. Man, he's dense, she says, shaking her head. Well, I think she finally took the hint, Hanta says, looking behind him. She didn't look too happy with you. She wasn't. I denied her, the pathetic boy who follows around took offense to me, hurting her feelings, and tried to step in. I tried to step away because, like, fuck am I getting into trouble with Aizawa for fighting that douche. I'll save that for fucks who are worth it, like Deku. I'd rather you didn't, Ejido says, grinning. Katsuki rolls his eyes, but he finds his lip twitching. Anyways, you walked in on the rest. Man, that's whack, Denki says. But hey, it looks like they got the message now. You should be all good. It absolutely was not good. Kotsky should have known that a girl who couldn't take no wouldn't be able to take what happened to her standing down. He should have also paid attention when she first said that she was class president. The first time a girl, this one different than the other, comes up to him with a card, Kotsky nearly sighs. He doesn't want to deal with this anymore. Doesn't want a fucking repeat. But he's trying. He really is trying to be a better person. He can't be the gentle and kind person that others are, but he can be more patient. He can hold in the cursing and the anger, at least till it's more deserved. So he sits there and waits, with his most bored-looking face, as she goes on and on about how much she's always admired him, and that she would love if he returned her affections. No he says. A voice that sounds suspiciously like Ejiro whispers that he should soften the blow a little. So he adds, I don't feel the same way. There, clear and straight to the point. The girl blinks at him for a moment, and Kotsky braces himself for demands of why, or worse, crying. Neither happens. Instead, she starts to laugh. Now it's Kotsky's turn to blink. He's not great at people, but he's pretty sure that this isn't the usual response to rejection. But he mentally shrugs. If that's what she needs to do, then whatever. That's her problem. He starts to walk away when she steps in front of him. He's starting to get annoyed by that. She puts a hand on her hip, cocks her head at him and smirks, waiting. He just raises an eyebrow at her. Did you really think I was asking you out? Yes. Wasn't that what you just said? You idiot. I wouldn't ask you out. But you did. Kosky hates being confused. It just makes him agitated. Yeah, as a joke. I mean, come on. 
She looks him up and down. Who would seriously ask you out? Oh. Her smirk widens. Then it falls as he nods. Yeah, okay. So are we done now, or? Because he really needs to get back to the dorms. Wait, wait! Oh, great. There's more. Is that it? Yes. He sidesteps her and starts walking away. The girl just stares after him. After that, a pattern emerges. Every week, a new person comes up to him to declare their love, only to then laugh in his face. Honestly, Kotsky doesn't get the point. He stopped responding to most of them. It's more annoying than anything. The only thing he's glad for is that they catch him when he's alone. He really doesn't want to have to explain this to the squad. No doubt they would laugh at him, especially Denki. Pleased that someone else is having relationship troubles. He doesn't need their teasing. So he keeps the pranks. He thinks they're pranks. He doesn't know he's never pranked anyone before, and this isn't like any of the pranks the squads like to pull. To himself. And just moves on with his life. Because life rule number two comes to bite in his ass... The pranks only stay between him and their lame followers for two months, before one of them approaches him at lunch. Kotsky tries to glare extra hard, warning him away, but he seems brave, head held high. The table falls silent as he stands before them, pink card in hand. Before he can even ask, Kotsky says, No, not even looking up from his food. The guy doesn't seem to care, still going on with his plan as if he memorized it. Bakugo Kotsky, I want to express my feelings for you. No. He can already hear the others giggling, can see Denki nudging a suddenly still Ezidor, can see Hunter and Mina's smug grins as they lean in closer to listen in. I can't hold them in any longer, he says. Voice so monotone that he almost looks bored. No. And I would be so grateful if you would accept this card. The squad is desperate to hold in their laughter now, eyes bulging as they watch like it's some kind of sports match. Kartsky pinches the bridge of his nose. You can move on to the next section now. And that makes the table confused. The guy, so casually, and with that same neutral look on his face, takes the card and rips it in half. Just kidding. No one could ever love you. Ha ha. Kartsky looks at him. He looks back, face completely blank. Are we done? Yeah, whatever. Bye. Then he heel turns and walks away. Kartsky, hoping that the squad can, for once, drop it, goes back to eating, shoving food into his mouth so he doesn't have to talk. He can feel the squad looking at him, but fuck them if they think he's going to say anything first. He stuffs his face and looks at his phone and pretends he isn't burning up from their looks. Okay. Denki finally says, breaking the silence. Am I the only one out of the loop, or...? No, yeah, I'm just as confused, Hunter says. He leans on his elbows, getting closer to Kartsky as his eyes glance to where the guy walked off. What was that? He hisses. Kartsky rolls his eyes. An annoyance, he grunts. Don't worry about it. They'll tire themselves out. They'll tire themselves out? Dude, has this happened before? Ejido almost yelps. Kartsky frowns. This is a lot more yelling than the laughter he expected. 
He almost prefers laughter. Yeah, every couple of days. It's that head bitch putting them up to it, I just know it. She's lucky that he has more important things to do, like become the next number one hero, and enough time to terrorize the little shits like her. Wait, 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 Mina says, putting her hands up. Back up. This has been happening a lot? This exact thing? Uh, yeah. Isn't that what he just fucking said? The whole pretending to confess before ripping the card up. Even that. He takes a sip of his tea and nods. Next to him, Ejidol shatters a cup. They all jump, and Kartsky makes an angry sound. What the fuck did you do that for, you dumbass? You got it everywhere. He scrambles to help clean it up. Napkins. Ejidol catches his wrist, stopping him, and Kartsky looks up to stare into angry red eyes. He finds himself swallowing. Eh, uh, how long? What? The hand squeezes. Kotsky. He's never heard Ejido's voice sound so serious before. How long have they been doing this? What the fuck does it even matter? Another squeeze, and Kotsky absolutely does not wince. Okay, fuck. Fine. The past couple of months, ever since that confrontation with those two bitch extras in the courtyard. Dude. Mina breathes, eyes wide. Why didn't you say anything? Why would I say anything? Kotsky wonders. It's just a dumb prank, who cares? It's not a prank. Ejido is growling now, and it just starts to confuse Kartsky more. What did he say that got them so worked up? They're harassing you. No. Kartsky instantly denies. He gives a bitter snort. <laughs> Trust me, I know what harassment is. They're just being dumb. The squad gives each other that look. Kartsky. And Kartsky instantly tries to brussel at that trying not to scare the feral cat voice Hanta uses. You're not trying to hide this as some sort of punishment for yourself or anything like that, right? Of course not, Kartsky says. He goes back to glaring at his bowl, suddenly not hungry anymore. That's stupid. I just don't think it's a big deal. We just... And now Mina seems to be floundering. We just want you to know you don't have to put up with this. I'm not trying to start a fight here, Kotsky says. Isn't that what you fucks want? Sure, but there's a difference between starting unnecessary fights and starting necessary ones. I think this is a necessary fight to start, Denki says. Ejido is silent, still glowering. Hands still clasped around Kartsky's wrist. So what? They do some stupid shit and I'm allowed to hit them now? Is that it? Kartsky asks. He doesn't know why he's raising his voice, or why he wants to pull away and go back to his room. His stomach is squirming. He doesn't like it. You don't have to hit them, but you don't need to be so docile in accepting this. They're harassing you. And I told you they're not. He told you that no one would ever love you, Ejido says, voice slow. His eyes are half-lidded, red flashing like lightning. And then laughed about it. And? The silence is the tense kind. The kind that comes when everyone stills and looks at him. And Kotsky squirms because, what the fuck? What the fuck is this bullshit? He bares his teeth at them, palms crackling. So what? Like, I don't know that. Like, this is news to me. I already accepted it, which means they can't hurt me, which means I am not being harassed.
Ichiro stands up and walks away. Katsuki gapes at him, then turns wide-eyed to the others. What's his problem? Katsuki, bro. Tenki says, shaking his head. And he gets up to chase after Ejiro. Hunter and Mina sit there and watch him, not blinking. Katsuki doesn't know how to act, so he gets up and throws his tray away and heads to his room. Katsuki didn't get much sleep, too busy staring at the ceiling, mind twisting and turning. He has no idea what set the squad off so much. It's just a stupid prank, right? He had thought they would spend a week laughing at him and then forget all about it. Instead, they had just gotten... mad? And, it seems, the most confusing part, like they were mad on his behalf. Katsuki is familiar with anger in all its forms. Some would say he revels in it, but he basks in being so angry. He knows that it pushes him, and he knows that it gets him into trouble. But usually, it's people getting angry at him, and if this is that sort of anger, he could handle it. But this is different. They're getting angry on his behalf, and that so rarely happens. Harassment. He scoffs. First of all, he's not being harassed. They're just constantly annoying him. And second of all, it's not like they're hurting his feelings. Do they think he's so weak as to allow words like that to get to him? And has been called much worse? If not, then why is the squad so upset? He just can't figure it out. When his alarm goes off, he lumbers his way downstairs and into the kitchen, where he stops and stares. Most of the rest of the class is there. A rarity since Katsuki is one of the first to wake up, who all turn as he comes in. Katsuki narrows his eyes at them, and their forced cheerful greetings. Shit, what the fuck did he do now? He absolutely does not care what they think. He never has. He grunts, moving past them to get some of his breakfast ingredients out. Tired and already annoyed about today, he gets his morning protein shake ready, and mentally prepares himself for his run. The air is still tense. He can feel those eyes following him around the room, even if they dart away whenever he looks. Kotsky couldn't handle that on even his best days. He slams his cup to the counter and whips around to glare at them. Fucking what? Nothing, Uraka says. Fucking cheerfully. He glowers, crossing his arms. I'm not fucking stupid. I can feel you guys staring, so stop fucking around and just be up front with me. There's a brief moment where it's obvious that they're all trying not to look at each other. Katsuki can't help his eyes drifting to Ezido, slightly surprised to see the other boy glaring back. He has half a mind to bear his teeth at him, but before he can, Yayorozu steps forward, clearing her throat. Bakugo, it has come to our attention that you have been harassed for the past- You told everyone! Katsuki whips around to the squad. They all square their shoulders and nod, not looking very sorry at all. Ida steps forward as well, adjusting his glasses. And a good thing, too. We of Class 3A will not accept this kind of behavior. If you're being harassed, you should feel free to come forward. I'm not being fucking harassed. I told them that. And what else did you tell us, Kotsky? Ejiro growls. Kotsky turns towards him, noting that people have started to edge away from the other boy. Why don't you think you're being harassed? Is this... Are you fucking mad that I'm not angry about this? Yes. Now tell them why you think they're nothing more than an annoyance. The entire class is looking back and forth between them. Kotsky huffs. 
It's a stupid idea anyway. I guess that bitch wants me to make me feel the same way she did when I rejected her, but I don't care about it if people pretend to ask me out. Why? He never knew that Ejiro's voice could get so low. Now it's Katsuki's turn to growl. He feels backed into a corner, and a sweat dripping down his back, and sparks unintentionally denoting in his hands. What do you mean, why? You all know me, you all know the reason why. I'm angry, I'm violent, I was fucking chained up in front of billions of people throwing a tantrum. I was kidnapped because I thought I would make a fucking perfect villain. Why the fuck would anyone want to ask that out? There's that silence again. He feels like he's being peeled open, dissected for everyone to see. His skin is crawling with the need to run, with the need to fight, with the need to explode. He's waiting for someone to say something, to give him a reason to go off. He's almost startled by the hand on his shoulders. He swings, but the explosion is caught by a hardened hand. Ejiro stands over him, looking down at him, and Katsuki finds words catching in his throat. You were loved, Ejiro whispers. He squeezes his shoulders, almost shaking them. You're so fucking loved. Kotsky is never speechless. He always has a comeback or a snide comment to throw, or he lets his glare do the talking. Here, he can't think of a single thing to say. So he runs. He runs all the way up to his room, and he slams the door and his heart is pounding. He can feel how red his face is, and his stomach feels like it's going to squirm out of his body. He sits down, and he absolutely does not cry. He doesn't leave his room for the entire day, thankful that it's the weekend. No one tries to get him to come out. No one comes to see him. He isn't a complete wuss. Monday comes and he leaves for class. He pauses for a second when he sees Tokoyami, but the bird boy just moves past him, giving him his usual greeting. Like nothing happened. It seems that's the class motto. They greet him. Uraraka asks if he did the homework for their heroics and rescuing class. Sato asks him if he wanted anything to be added to the weekly shopping list before he sends it out to the teachers to be looked over. And Todoroki asks if they're still on for the next day. And no one mentions what happened on Friday evening. Katsuki, who is well-versed in bottling up feelings, thinks, Okay, cool. He can do this. He can pretend nothing happened and just move on. He has trouble bumping shoulders with Ejiro, with hanging out with the squad at first, still a little raw from the sincere emotions they had put on display. But they seem to be going with this whole, ignore it and it will go away. They laugh and hang off him and stay completely away from anything that would lead to some sort of serious conversation. Ejiro acts odd. He plays around like the squad. He teases Katsuki, and he sits on his desk to annoy him. But he seems hesitant with his touches, like he wants there to be more weight to them than the usual stuff they do. And he keeps looking at Katsuki. Long and deep looks. Searching looks. They splay Katsuki open, stare deep into his soul. Kotsky doesn't know what to do, and it's so frustrating. There are days when he hates Life Rule 3, and he doesn't want to just accept it. He looks at Ejido and his heart seems to pound in his chest, louder than any explosion he could cook up. He looks at Ejido and he sweats more than on the hottest day in the summer. He looks at Ejido and he wants. He wants like he wants to be the best in the class. 
He wants like he wants to be acknowledged for how powerful he is. He wants like he wants to be the number one hero. And it hurts to know that he will never get that. It hurts more to know that it's because of who he is. And because deep down he's just that unlikable. That unlovable. Especially to someone as happy and loving as Kirishima Ejiro. A week into everyone pretending he hasn't had a freak out in the kitchen, another girl tries to corner him to give him a fake letter. Katsuki has a razor-thin hold on his anger. No matter how far he had come, his newfound patience can only last so long. And so, he's glaring at her, not even hearing the words, just thinking about what he's going to do at practice, when someone surprises him by coming up to stand next to him, bumping shoulder to shoulder. The girl stutters to a stop. It's Todoroki, who nods his head in greeting. Bakugo raises an eyebrow, but nods back. Bakugo, he starts. But he doesn't look at Bakugo. His heterochromatic eyes drill into her, and Katsuki could almost see her shaking. I was wondering if you would like to train with Izuku and I later today. Katsuki frowns. Today's Tuesday. Without him knowing about it, he got dragged into a rotation of training partners. Most often he trains with the squad, spending most of his nights endurance training with Ejido. But on Mondays, various classmates come by to train. Wednesdays he trains with Uraraka, Thursdays with Todoroki, and Fridays with Deku. Sunday is the day Todoroki, Deku, and him try to practice combination moves. Todoroki shifts, Katsuki blinking as he gets closer. True, but we were so close to getting that one move down. He tilts his head. Unless you're too tired, in which case I understand. Fine, you jackass, Katsuki says, shoving at him. But you better prepare yourself. I'm gonna fucking run you through the ringer. Todoroki smiles. It's small, a soft lift of his lips. It looks like a twitch to everyone else, but Katsuki sees it for the wide smile it is. He absolutely doesn't smile back. The girl seems to be shrinking back the longer the conversation goes. Eventually, and between the two discussing the best way to work around the fact that if Todoroki got anywhere near Katsuki with his flames, they would all go up. She slinks away. Katsuki is waiting outside the gym area changing room for Uraraka, when two guys trap him this time. They smile, and even Katsuki has to admit it's a bit creepy, and present their letters. Katsuki bares his teeth. Just go away. Don't care. It seems like you do, one guy says. The other nods. Are we getting through to you that you are worthless? Not someone worth anyone's time. Kotsky opens his mouth to tell them to fuck off when the door opens and Uraraka steps out. Clever eyes take in the scene and then she's giving them a smile of her own. It's just as creepy as theirs. She turns to Kotsky, leaning in closer. Hey, hey, since I did such a good job today, won't you make me mochi this weekend? Katsuki snorts, instantly forgetting the two extras. Who said you did well? You could have easily gotten twenty more reps on that last set. Uraka punches his arm before she starts to walk towards the exit. Katsuki unconsciously follows her. The two guys watch them go. So... You're telling me that I'm kicking those weights' asses, and that I could take even Shoji now wasn't you complimenting me? Kotsky sniffs, looking away. So what? You still could have done more. Come on, Blasty! I promised to buy the ingredients. 
and we can gossip about the latest episode of... Kotsky slaps a hand over her mouth, eyes darting around. Don't say it out loud, he hisses. He can see Uraka's eyes crinkle as she laughs at him. She manages to pry his hand away, voice raising. What? What was that? Don't want people to know you- Shut up! Shut the fuck up! She darts out of his reaching hands, outright laughing at him now. She cups her hands over her mouth, fully shouting now. Bakugo Kotsky watches- He tackles her out the door, dragging her towards their dorm room. If I fucking promise to make mochi for you this weekend, will you promise to shut the fuck up? She beams at him. Absolutely. Kotsky is slightly limping as he returns from his internship. A long, shitty day of patrolling, which ended up in a shitty villain battle. He wasn't hurt, but he managed to land on his leg wrong. So when he sees two girls and a guy, all holding pink letters, waiting in his agency doors, he turns right around. Unfortunately, they see him. Crown Zero! They all call out. Their voice is sickly sweet. He limps faster but they still managed to catch up to him. Please accept... Gachan! They all turned to see Deku opening the door, grinning brightly. One of the girls blushes. The guy starts to stutter. Deku bursts past them to latch on to Katsuki. Hey, are you okay? Do you need to see recovery goal? Katsuki snorts. Fuck no, I'm fine. He runs a critical eye over Deku, sporting his own bruises and scratches. What the fuck happened to you? Did you get in a fight with a cat? Deku starts to stutter, and Katsuki throws his head back to laugh. <laughs> really? The future number two hero lost a fight with a fucking cat? I didn't lose the fight, Midori says with a pout. And anyway, who says I'm gonna be number two? Me since obviously I'm going to be number one. Not if I beat you. You won't beat me. The two continue to bicker as they leave the agency, the three extras completely forgotten. Three guys try to get Kartsky after class, but before they can even open their mouth, Aizawa appears, like a freaking ghost. Bakugo. Do you have to fucking do that? Language. He says it like he doesn't care what Kotsky's response is. Do you have a second? I would like to go over your essay on building reconstruction when it comes to heroics. Kotsky quirks an eyebrow at him. Is it not up to your standards? I don't believe that saying, if the constitution companies paid their employees a workable wage, then the shitty bastards wouldn't have to reply on free help, is an acceptable phrase for an academic paper. Kotsky snorts, crossing his arms. It's true, though. As always, mouth twitches. Maybe so. Still, I'm sure we can find a more constructive way to say that. He brandishes his arm, gesturing for Kotsky to follow him back into the classroom. Kotsky goes, absolutely not smiling, when Aizawa asks, in his more deadly teacher voice. Do you three need something? The loser extras scram. Kotsky may not know a lot about having friends or social interaction that doesn't involve beating the shit out of people. But he's not stupid. He knows what his fucking classmates are doing. Knows that for the past two weeks, he's never been left alone for someone with a pink letter to get at him. He's furious with them. He doesn't need their pity. The help. He absolutely does not feel warmed by the fact that they care. The ringleader bitch apparently notices too. Kotsky doesn't know why she's still trying, but she's getting desperate, having more and more of her classmates approach him, stalk him. They've taken to following him into the goddamn restrooms. 
and every time one of his classmates appears, talking his ear off, asking all sorts of favours. Bakugo, help us with homework? Bakugo, help us cook dinner? Bakugo, can you show me how you bend that way? Bakugo, lend us your yoga routine? Kotsky hates to admit that he doesn't tend so much anymore whenever one of the extras approach. He doesn't grit his teeth or clench his fists, knowing that he'll have to sit there and listen to them tell him how unworthy of love and affection he is. The bitch wants him to suffer, but he's not suffering. When he says that the ringleader bitch is getting desperate, he means it. Kotsky knew that she had been watching him for a while. He just wasn't aware how closely that was. It's a nice warm day, and Kotsky is returning from a visit back home. He's one of the first of his classmates to return, only Eijido and Shoji milling around. He nods to both of them before going to his room to set his weekend bag down. A text from his parents lets him know that he left his charger in his dad's car, and so, sighing, he heads back down. But turning the corner of the dorm leads him to being surrounded by various people. The bitch ringleader in the centre, standing tall, with her hands on her hips and a vicious smirk on her face. Kotsky pinches the bridge of his nose. Look, do we have to do this now? I'm actually having a good day and would much rather not have your shitty face ruining it. The girl's smirk drops as she glares at Kotsky, furious for a split second, before her face smooths back out. And then she's back to smirking. You know, she says, voice high and snotty. I don't know what I ever saw in you. My good looks and the fact I'm the fucking best at everything, Kotsky says, raising an eyebrow. You're so fucking full of yourself, she sneers, but Kotsky can see that she's shaking, her whole facade starting to fall apart. The people surrounding them start to fidget, getting antsy. Why can't you take the hint that you're unwanted? Are you really fucking telling me I'm the one who can't take a fucking hint? Kotsky asks. The girl's face twists. An ugly sort of thing. Well, more than usual, anyway. Why couldn't you have loved me? I was willing to look past your ugly attitude and the way you totally can't control yourself. I was willing to help mold you into a more wonderful person. I was willing to love you. Kotsky narrows his eyes at her his stomach twisting. Another person who wants to fucking change him. Why can't the world just leave him alone? Who wants the love of some prissy little manipulative bitch like you? There are rumblings from the group as various people start shouting. The bitch raises her hand and the crowd falls silent, like the loser followers they are. She smirks, tilting her head like she has something important to say. You better take any love you can get, even from prissy little manipulative bitches like me. Especially from prissy little manipulative bitches like me, since that's the only type of person who could ever love an angry, violent, hot-headed, narrow-minded pig like you who thinks that a strong quirk makes up for your lack of personality. Kotsky throws his head back, laughing. And even he can hear how sharp and cruel it sounds. You think I give a fuck? I'm gonna be the next number one hero. I don't need people to love me. So even you realize that you aren't worthy of anything close to having a partner. Kotsky opens his mouth, ready to tell her to fuck off, when Ajiro's voice cuts through the rowdy crowd, loud and clear. What's going on here? Ejiro is a good head taller than most of the people gathered, so it's easy to see him as he makes his way through the crowd. He has his hands stuffed in his pockets, stride long and almost lazy looking, if it weren't for the sharp look in his eyes and the glint of his teeth. Tanaka seems to shrink when Ejiro reaches her, but he doesn't even glance her way. 
Instead, his eyes are focused on Kartsky, pinning him to the wall. Ajiro breezes past her, and Kartsky blinks as he's backed up against the wall, Ajiro caging him in. Kartsky looks at him, his heart absolutely not fucking pounding out of his chest. Hey, what? Ajiro slams a hand against the wall, leaning in close. Their faces are inches apart. Kotsky licks his lips and a shiver goes down his spine at the sight of those dark red eyes following his movement. Are these people bothering you, Kotsky? He asks. And Kotsky can feel the warmth of his breath hit him. He is absolutely not weak in the knees. We're not bothering him, the queen bitch says, though Kotsky can't help but snort in amusement at how weak her voice is compared to a few minutes ago. We're just trying to help. Ajiro doesn't even bother look her way. By harassing him? Kotsky's eyebrows raise, his mouth opening to deny the comment, but the look Ajiro sends him has him closing it again. Shit. When did Ajiro get this kind of power over him? We- we weren't harassing him! Ajiro finally looks over his shoulder giving her an unimpressed look before turning back to Kartsky. But I don't want to talk about that right now. I just want to clear up a misconception you both seem to be under. Kartsky frowns at him. Ejiro smiles, though it doesn't lose that sharp edge. Kartsky is loved. Very much so. Again, Kartsky goes to protest. And again, Ejiro shushes him. The bigger man leans in closer, lips inches from his own. It blocks out the group and it feels like it's just the two of them. Like Ejiro is just talking to him. Everyone in the class loves Kartsky. It's why we train with him, why we study with him, why we beg him to cook for us. We respect him, we allow him to support us, and in return we support him. What you fail to take into account is that we of Class 3A look out for each other. We are friends. That's not love, Tanaka says, but her voice is shaky. There are murmurs amongst the group and what sounds like a few people backing away. Th that's friendship. It's not comparable. Stupid, Ejiro admonishes. And Kotsky knows that must cut deep, to have someone as nice and friendly as Kirishima call you stupid. Friendship is just as important, too. But sure, let's take out friendship. That doesn't change the fact that Mr. Aizawa has just as much respect for Kotsky as Kotsky has for him. Mr. Aizawa trusts Kotsky to do what's right. He trusts that Kotsky knows not only his own limits, but the limits of others. He trusts that even if Kotsky messes up, he'll learn from his mistakes. That's not love either. Tanaka sounds desperate now, but Kartsky doesn't care. His entire attention is focused on Ejido. How Ejido's hand brushes through his hair. How Ejido's eyes bore into his. How Ejido is so, so close. And how Kartsky is holding his breath, every word twisting into his heart. He absolutely does not believe what Ejido is saying. But he wants to. Gods, does he want to. Ejiro leans in even closer, and there's not an inch of space between them. Their lips are so close to touching, and Kartsky dares not move. And then how about this? Ejiro whispers, neither caring if she actually hears. I love Kartsky. Kotsky's breath hitches. I love his determination, his willpower, how strong he is. I love how he won't bow to anyone, that he sticks by his convictions. I love how he'll train until he's dead, just to reach his goal. Ejiro scoots closer, one knee pressing in between Kotsky's thighs, spreading them. 
but I also love how much he cares. Sure, he acts like an asshole. But once you're his, he'd rather die than have something bad happen to you. Kirishima's other hand reaches down, squeezing Katsuki's hips. I love how you'll bitch at us to eat, bitch at us to do our homework, bitch at us to go to sleep earlier. You worry so much for our health and we notice. Kotsky is absolutely not blushing. There's no red that spreads down his neck. You're smart and powerful, but you work hard for those things. It saddens me to see you so rarely relax, because you look so absolutely stunning when you do. When you smile, when you finally lose control and throw your head back to laugh. You don't see it, but whenever you do, I find myself stopping to stare at you. Ichiro's body is pressed against Katsuki's, one hard line against another. I do that a lot, actually. Stare at you. It's like you're this magnificent firework, and even if I blink, I might miss you. Ichiro's mouth pulls down slightly. I hate that you don't see yourself that way. That instead you think of yourself as some kind of tool, just used to reach your goal and not good for anything else. Katsuki's chest hurts, and he wants to beg Ejiro to stop. Would do so, actually, willingly, if he could get his mouth to work. But Ejiro barrels on. This absolutely wasn't the way I planned to confess. I wanted to make it more personal. I was planning it out with the squad, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. Baku Gurkowski, I love you. Ichiro leans in, slowly. Kotsky couldn't stop him even if he wanted to. He absolutely does. But he doesn't move. Ichiro's lips are pressed against his. Just a soft push. Kotsky has never kissed anyone before. He knows he isn't the best kisser, but that doesn't stop Ejiro. He brings his hand up to Katsuki's cheek, guiding him into a better position. Katsuki is trembling, but he can't break away, can't admit to himself that he doesn't want to. Unfortunately, a shriek rips them away. Stop it! Stop it! Tanaka screams. Her followers give her a wide berth, looking at her like the crazy person she is. You can't love him! Why? Ejiro demands. His body is blocking Katsuki's view, curling over him like Katsuki needs to be protected or something. Katsuki absolutely does not love it. B because, because he's a brute, the girl tries. A savage! He doesn't deserve to be loved, says the girl who spent a month chasing him and wouldn't give up till you found some other drama. Ejido growls. It rumbles in his chest. By the way, how does the guy who actually likes you feel about how much time you're spending on bothering Kartsky? She flushes. It's answer enough. We both want revenge on him for... For what? For saying no? There are more murmurs, and Ejido frowns. What exactly did you tell your classmates to get them to follow you? What lie did you make up? Uh, I... She's stammering now. Her followers have started to slink away. Embarrassment at being involved with this, clear. By the time she makes an excuse, she's by herself. Left all alone. Ejiro goes for the kill. It looks like the loveless one was really you. Her lower lip trembles and she breaks out into tears. Kotsky believes they're real this time. She turns and runs. And suddenly, they're by themselves. Glaring up at the taller boy, Kotsky tries to push him away. 
Ichiro doesn't budge. She's gone, shitty head. Let me... Darn. The command is so soft that Katsuki doesn't say the first thing that comes to his mind. Or the second. Don't what? He hisses. You can be mad at me. You can reject me, but please. Please don't go back to using nicknames as a way to hide your emotions. Kotsky stiffens. I do not- You do. Ejido interrupts. I've known you for three years now. Of course, I know what you're running away from something looks like. I'm not running away! He couldn't even if he tried. Kirishima's big, stupid, bulky body has him in lockdown. Emotionally, you are. Katsuki absolutely does not sputter. I, I ain't doing shit! I just don't need your pity. Katsuki. Digital stern voice is Katsuki looking up. That wasn't pity. I told you. It wasn't how I planned to confess, but it was a real confession. I love you. I have for a while now. Kotsky doesn't know what to do with his hands. He can feel tiny, tiny explosions going off in his palms. He knows Ejido can take them, but he doesn't want to give the other man the wrong impression. He's not nervous or anxious about this. He just hates being lied to. You can't. Kotsky states it as a fact. Why? Because I'm me. You said you know me for three years. Then you know every reason why you should be running in the other direction. Ejido grabs his hand, and Kotsky has to fight to make sure the explosions don't get bigger. It's because I know that I'm not running. Ejido smiles now. If you couldn't make me run when I thought you were a grumpy asshole, what makes you think I'm going to run now when I know you better? Kotsky can't hold his gaze. Can't keep looking into those deep pools. You'll regret it. I promise you, you'll regret it. The fingertip on his chin brings him back to staring at Ejiro. And if I don't? You will. We'll see. Ejiro's eyes flicker down to Katsuki's lips. I really, really want to kiss you again. Can I? Katsuki should say no. Instead, he swallows and nods. The kiss is better the second time. Katsuki is still freaking out. A small part of him frustrated that he hasn't instantly learned how to be a good kisser. It's short. And Ejiro draws away. Kotsky tries one more time to talk sense into him. I'm gonna ruin your life. It's the harshest reality Kotsky can think of. And all Ejiro does is grin in the face of that. Really? Because all I want to do is spend the rest of my life convincing you that you weren't. He bends down to press a kiss on Kotsky's left cheek. That you were worth the fight. A kiss on his right cheek. That you are loved. A kiss to his forehead. Kotsky absolutely does not surrender.